All right, now that we have learned about those three gas laws, Boyle's, Charles, and Gay-Lussac's, what we can do now is we can learn the combined gas law. And that is where we are actually combining these three gas laws into one equation. Because it turns out all three of these laws, uh, they have the same pattern. They show that same pattern of the relationship between pressure and volume, volume and temperature, pressure and temperature. So we can combine them. Okay, so if we were to combine them, we would see that P1 times V1 divided by T1 would equal P2 times V2 divided by T2. Okay, so this is your combined gas law equation. So you can go ahead and write this down on that equation sheet that you have, so you have it with you. Um, if you would like it in one straight line, uh, we can also write the combined gas law this way. Okay, but here we need to be careful because we have to pay attention to those temperatures. Notice what we had to do there in order to write it out all on one line so it's all done by multiplication. We have to switch those temperatures. So P1 times V1 times T2 equals P2 times V2 times T1. Okay, and that's because of the way that that temperature relationship exists with the pressure and the volume. All right, so let's take a look at an example problem using the combined gas law. A gas occupies 7.84 centimeters cubed at 71.8 kilopascals and 25 degrees Celsius. Find its volume at standard temperature and pressure. Okay, so like we always do, let's analyze the problem. Let's see what kind of information do I have and what do I ultimately need to know, okay? So, what do I know? I know my volume starts out at 7.84 centimeters cubed. Okay, I know a pressure at that same temperature, P1, 71.8 kilopascals. And I know my temperature at those measurements is 25 degrees Celsius. But we're doing gas laws, so I need to go ahead and convert that 25 degrees Celsius into Kelvin. So I'm going to do 25 plus 273, because that's my conversion factor, and I get 298K. Okay, now I need my twos. So find its volume. Okay, so my volume two, that's my question mark. That is what I don't know. That's what I need to know. Okay, and up here, my unit was centimeters cubed, so that means in my final answer, I should have centimeters cubed. Okay, my P2, my second pressure, uh, this is, it says standard temperature and pressure. So if I look back at my sheet of uh, those standard temperatures and pressures that we got when we did intro to gas laws, we can look at it and we can go, okay, well the problem gave me kilopascals, so I need that as well. And I can see from that sheet that we had that my standard pressure in kilopascals is 101.325. Okay, and then I also need my standard temperature and gas law, so I need that in Kelvin. And so we know from looking back at that intro to gas laws that my standard temperature is 273K. Okay. So, I've got two V's, two P's, and two T's. So, we're going to use that combined gas law. And let's analyze what kind of answer we're getting, okay? So, I have two pressures, and I can compare pressure one with pressure two. And I can see that the pressure went up, okay? And if I look at my two temperatures, I can see that my temperature went down. Okay, so thinking back to my three gas laws we learned and how they relate to volume, I can say that, okay, I know that when I calculate my second volume, it should be lower. 
okay? Because as pressure increases, volume decreases. As temperature decreases, volume decreases. So when I calculate this out, that's a way I can analyze and say, okay, does my answer make sense? If my volume two is lower than my volume one, then I'm on the right track. So let's plug this into our equation, paying careful attention to make sure I am putting the right number in the right location. That's the biggest mistake that students make on these problems is they put their numbers in the wrong place. So we got to make sure we get them in the right place. Okay, so my P1, my starting is 71.8. My V1, my starting volume is 7.84. Okay, and then I need my T2. Two, okay, my second temperature, which is the 273. Okay, and that's going to equal my P2, so pressure 2, that's the 101.325 at standard. My V2 is what I don't know, that's what I'm solving for. And then T1, okay, T1, so my starting temperature, which was 25 degrees Celsius, which we converted into Kelvin, so that's the 298. Okay. So now I'm running out of space on my slide here. So let's uh, let's write this out so that it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. Okay, and here's my math. So I wrote it all in one problem. This is just the exact same thing I had written out, but all on one line so we can see. So our first step is on this side, we don't have any unknown variables. So just multiply this out. So just pop that in your calculator, 71.8 times 7.84 times 273. And you're going to get this really big number, 153,674.976. Okay, I'm not going to do any rounding yet, always round at the end. So I'm going to keep that number. Then go ahead and multiply the numbers over here that I know, the 101.325 times 298, and you're going to get 30,194.85 and my unknown. Okay, then to solve for that unknown, remember we always do the opposite, so here we're multiplying. So we divide both sides by that 30,000 number, okay? So we're going to take this big number, 153,674.976, divide by 30,194.85, and our calculator is going to give us this nice big long number here, 5.089, so on and so on. Okay, then we're going to use our sig figs. We're going to look back at the problem. Uh, the number in our problem with the least amount of sig figs is three. So our final answer needs to have three. So I need this digit, this digit, and this digit. So 5.08. Look at the number that comes after the eight. It's a nine, so we're going to round up. So my final answer becomes 5.09. Okay, if you are keeping up with your units up here, okay, we know that we're going to divide by this side, so we can see that our kilopascals are going to cancel off, and we're going to see that our kelvins are going to cancel off, and we're going to be left with that centimeter cubed. Okay, we're left with that unit. So if you're keeping up with your units as you go, okay, when you divide, they cancel out, and so you're left with that centimeters cubed because there was nothing, no centimeters cubed to divide by, so it doesn't cancel out, okay? All right, if you worked along with me in this and you did not get this answer, get into contact with me and let me help you figure out what's going on because up next is your independent practice using the combined gas law.